part two uh, of the previous stream that we had. Um, we're gonna be working on the save system. It's gonna be a real pain in the butt, but I wanna explain to you kinda how our save system works in Father. By the way, I did wanna say a huge thank you, huge, huge thank you to Bruno and Massimilio, Massa, Massimiliano. Uh, thanks for joining full-time game dev. It really means a lot to me. Guys, full-time game dev is my program that uh, is actually 50% off right now. Um, if you want to join the program, there are five coupon codes left and you're gonna get the massive two month long bundle, of course. It's gonna take you two, about two months to finish this program. So be sure to check this out. You're gonna also learn 2D art, how to sh uh, get streamers to stream your game Streamers like Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie, MatPat, and also how to get a free shirt. And the way you do it is you just get it. So <laughs> that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna get a free shirt as well. And hey, there's five coupon codes below. And I have 3,000 students worldwide. And by the way, if you are a student, let us know in the chat or in the comment below what you think about the program. Um, but yeah, you're gonna learn how to secure funding from uh, Kickstarter, funding from publishers, how to code with C Sharp, how to use Unity, how to do 2D and 3D art. It's massive. It's a very, very big program. All right, let's jump inside of Unity, guys, and get started. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tad says, seems like this is a rerun of a stream, even though it says live. Well, that's true. It is, it is a rerun. Um, obviously I'm kidding. Okay, so while we were out, while the stream crashed, and while I was trying to figure out my internet, um, and just sort of waited for it to reload or whatever, uh, I figured out the save system, I got it working. Um, so it was like a really fast solution. So let me show you guys. If we clear our saves, things are working pretty good. All right, so it spawns us at spawn point zero. Great. And you can kind of see it here. It kind of looks like, well, I'm not going to say it, but it's an arrow for our spawn point. So it spawns us here. And all of our data is set up properly. We don't have any of the weapons collected because we cleared all of our save data. If I go through a door, it's going to load me into a new scene. Now it's going to be a, it's going to be a duplicate scene, but it's going to take me to a different spawn zone. It should be upper floor yep good and our weapon is correct our ammo is correct so we're in a totally different scene now with uh, duplicated game objects and um, even the player is is a new player and the game manager for some reason the game manager isn't persistent I'm not sure why I, again the save system was was designed by AJ so I'm not sure why the game manager isn't persistent um, but that's okay, it seems to be working. So if I go in here, it's gonna take us back to the original sequence to spawn point C. So now it takes us to C. So as you can see, everything looks like crap, but what I'm realizing is it works perfectly. Um, so the save system, whew, thank God it works. Um, there's one big problem and we need to address that today. Um, Oh, Kyle, thank you so much. Kyle says, hey, Thomas, I love the marketing that you teach us in the course. Um, Hunk, hello, hello, come on in, come on in. Um, and by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember that full-time game dev is 50% off right now. And you're gonna get three bonus courses, a free t-shirt, and you're gonna join over 3,000 students worldwide. So be sure to check that out using the links below and that coupon code below. So there's one big problem, and that's this. When I consume this key, when I pick this key up, Unity thinks, they go, they, whatever Unity's gender is, they think, okay, is this key actually a key that's been consumed or is it a pickup that's been consumed? Well, it's actually a key. It hasn't been consumed yet. 
So really it should respawn, this is what's weird, it should respawn once you load. Um, it's it's, it's kind of weird. So like if I don't use the key and I die, it should get set back to this position. The key will be removed from my inventory, right? So let's, let's do some testing here, okay? Um, I'm going to in, yeah, this is gonna be tough. Oh, sink here. Okay, okay. I'm gonna go to test four. And in test four, I'm, this is a totally different level. This is not the same one. I'm gonna put a spider up here that can kill us. If I die with, well, that's not true. Hmm. Hmm. Here's what I'll do. I'm gonna go to <laughs> test three here. I'm gonna put a spider in here. The spider's gonna kill us. And really what should happen is I should reset and my key should respawn. Okay, so let me show you what's going on here. Let's clear all of our save data. Hit play. All right. So if I go into our little foyer area here, you'll see our spider is right here. Hey, buddy. And if he kills me after I collect the key, so I'm gonna save it, okay, we're saved. Now if I reload, actually, um, yeah, if I die, actually I could just reload by pressing B. I don't even need the spider. So there he is, the key does not get reset. Um, that's okay because I have the key. Let's think here, what's the problem? There's a problem and I can't figure out what the problem is. It's like Inception. It's really, really challenging to, get, to wrap your head around save systems. So if I hit play here, if I clear the, all my save data and um, maybe this isn't a problem. Let's see here, let's see here. If I save right now and press V and save, then I collect this key and then I reload, it doesn't respawn. It doesn't respawn. Isn't that strange? Isn't that strange? Not sure why. If I do it again and press B a second time, there it is. So I don't know. I've, I'm very confused actually by what's going on here. Um, no, we don't want it to be able to respawn. Well, that actually might be the problem. No, no, that's not the problem. So really we need to go into the, into the save script here and double check what's going on. It looks like so, there's something maybe want, wrong with the renderer. Um, so let's, let's do a little bit of debug.log, okay? All righty, all righty. So it looks like we have a save system inside of our pickup class. So let's enter our pickup class. I'm gonna close everything actually. Close all of our tabs and let's just open up the pickup class so that I don't have to worry about all those other tabs up here. We're gonna go to our pickup class. Come on Unity, there we go, or Visual Studio. Um, it's checking our save state and loading it, right? And it looks like if allow respawn is set to true, it'll enable all this stuff. If allow respawn is set to false, let's do a little debug.log here. We're gonna say debug.log. There's like a lot of like uh, double negatives within this condition here, and I'm getting really confused. So <laughs> debug.log, um, saved state enabled is, and then we'll check it. Um, <clears throat> it should be true. It should be, yes, I am enabled. Because, well, if you save before collecting a key and then you collect the key and die, the key should respawn. It should be enabled. <coughs> so that's, that's really what's going on here. So let's go to Unity here and take a look. All right, so there's our key. 
I'm going to save with V. There we go. And then I'm going to check my console. Hopefully that spider's not there. Good. Okay, he's not. All right, let's check the console. I'm going to press B, which loads us. It says save state enable is true. So it means that it should enable itself, but it's not. So let's double check. Enable object. This is a function that's going to fire and enable all the proper objects. So the mesh renderers, all of that. So it looks like the mesh renderer is null. Um, it, it could be. So let's let's actually double check this. Let's say debug.log. Because that's the one thing I know we need. And this this might actually be a ineffective way. This this might be an ineffective script here. Because what it's doing is it's looking for a mesh renderer, but if the mesh renderer is disabled, isn't it null? Um, I'm not sure. So let's double check here. Debug.log and check. My mesh renderer is this. So let's double check this here. We might need to drag it in or actually just set a reference to it um, in the start function. Otherwise, it doesn't know what it is. It doesn't know what mesh renderer to disable or enable based on whether it's been collected or not. Hey, who, who's a uh, mod? Do we have any mods? Um, because 69mega.com, they want us to click on that link, don't they? I wonder why there's like a bunch of water emojis. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, so let's save. And by the way, those who are just joining us, just remember full-time game dev is 50% off right now. That does support the development of Father. Be sure to check it out below. Okay, so let's load. Loaded state, my mesh render is null. So it's null, that's the problem, my friends. So what we need to do is find all of our references, okay? So we're gonna go to, yeah, yeah, yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new function. And we're gonna say, just find our references, okay? So we're gonna go public void, um, graphics references, find graphics references, or set, uh, yeah, find graphics references. It's just gonna be a, 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 um, a function that fires at the very beginning. Uh, and then we're just gonna say, what? Stop, stop. All we're gonna do here is um, we're gonna say, hey, look, you know, our mesh renderer equals this. Our, ugh, that's such a, ugh. We need our mesh renderers equals R, right? That's gonna be mesh renderers. Uh, our renders, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Our skinned mesh renderers with an S, stop, uh, equals S. Our particle systems equals and we don't have any references to these just yet at the beginning, but our particle systems equals P. Um, I don't know if that's going to work, but it might. <laughs> and then our collider equals this. And then our colliders equals this. That's the theory. Um, and then also lighting effects, we don't need that. Okay, so let's let's grab put, grab all of these and make a reference. They're gonna be all private though. Um, so we're just gonna create a new field here. Header, references, put them all up here. Look at this mess. And then we're just gonna do this. Uh, mesh renderer is a mesh renderer, um, good. Where did my header go? My header disappeared. Um, mesh renderers is going to be a, a array. I know this is a freaking nightmare, guys. Just wait. 
our skinned mesh renderers, our skinned mesh renderers, our particle systems, um, is going to be an array. And then our, we need, I believe we need, uh, no, I don't know, I'm sh not sure what that is. Uh, our collider is our collider. And then our colliders is an array. And then that is about it. So we can delete all this here, right? And um, we can delete that. What is that? I'm gonna copy all this here. Go back in time, because I made a mistake. That's okay. Looks like we have a serializable something here. I don't know what that's for. Um, but let's just go up and, yeah, I don't know why it's like that. But we'll do that. Okay, there we go. So it looks like we have references now to all of that. Not here for some reason. Why is that? Mesh renderer does not exist in the current context. Are you sure? Because I just put it there. Um, there we go. So we just need references to these so that we can actually access them. Um, right? So let's actually go down. Okay, it looks like we have skinned mesh renderers. It doesn't exist. I don't know why that. So I don't know. Does anybody know how to add a mesh renderer um, to the for each? Does that make sense? Um, I would, oh, is it R? R or, hmm. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll, we'll jump back down to that. But we also don't have a skinned mesh renderer. So we need that as well. Let's figure this out together. Um, skinned mesh renderer. There we go. Um, that exists now. So it looks like we have everything we need. I would want this to be called this collider. And then this colliders. Just because I don't want the name to be the same. Um, Okay, so let's scroll down here. Yeah, does anybody have an, a solution here to adding these colliders to an array? Yeah. Um, good, okay. So that we find our graphics references, we're gonna do that in start, okay? So it'll be right about here. We'll just find our graphics references. Good, so those will be found and then they'll be applied, right, to each one of these references here. Then all we gotta do is go into our actual enable, disable, blah, 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 and we just need to do a for loop through all of this crap, which sucks. So, mesh renderers add R, okay, okay. So we do mesh renderer dot add R. Is that it? Looks like you can't do that. And blah, 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 add mesh renderers, uh, add R. Yes? Add is not accessible. Extension method, add accepting the first argument. Yeah, is it this? Nope. Huh, this sucks. This sucks. I don't like this whole process, honestly. Um, I, I, I think that it's a little messy for anything that's a pickup. I don't understand why we need to disable all this. This is kind of a mess. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little bit more simplistic approach. This is not my favorite. I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to disable I'm gonna say, if we have graphics, if we have pickup graphics, then pickup graphics, because this is just a mess, pickup graphics dot set active uh, render. Okay? That's it. Um, pickup graphics doesn't exist, that's okay. So we're gonna go all the way up here and we're just gonna do a little bit of a cleanup here. 
Because that, that pro, I mean, I, I was trying to basically retrofit exactly what we were doing and uh, or retrofit what the previous script was doing. And I just don't like it. I like everything to be nice and parented in one object. It's going to be called the pickup graphics and then it's going to disable it. That's about it. Um, we're going to make sure we serialize that. But the problem is we need to go inside of every single pickup we have and we need to drag in that graphic. Okay, so it's kind of a pain in the butt, but we're going to be okay. Where's our find references? We don't have one. We got rid of that, right? Um, good, good, good. So let's see if we get any errors. Cancel. Let it load. Okay, we have one error here. Uh, it doesn't look like we do, actually. Let's go back to Unity here and take a look. Now, I don't want to do all that list crap. All I want to do is have a graphic. Um, it's called the pickup graphics. That's it. Um, so we have all of our pickups here. Okay, so we're going to go down the freaking list. So we have pickup automatic, which is going to be the pivot point. Um, the pistol is going to be the pickup point. This is uh, the ammo, rifle, same thing. Ro uh, that's the rocket launcher ammo same thing um rockets variants i don't know what that is but i don't even think i'm using that but let's just drag it in anyway shotgun same thing shotgun same thing automatic pickup variant same thing right um yeah that should do it um let's keep going automatic coin bag pickup pivot um, the coin chest, same thing. Coin pickup, same thing. So we're just going through all of our pickups here. Um, and we don't have that many, so we're almost done. Health small, same thing. Oops, looks, look, we have a health small pickup issue. We're missing a graphic here. Why is that? Let's go to health large. We have our cake. What about our other cake? Do we have a small cake? We have an ice cream bar. Yep, so we need to go to health large pickup so it looks like our health large pickup we need that ice cream cake to be added to it looks like we had an issue i didn't know we had an issue health pickup large let's double check here good and then small this is going to be have the ice cream cake ice cream bar so there it is it looks like our material is not on there there he is and that should do it honestly um we could put that inside of our pickup pivot and then just drag that in i want to make sure about something though let's go to our health large pickup Good, we're okay. So this is parented, great. Um, the same is true with the health small. Okay, we're almost done here, guys. We have the small here, same thing. Key pickup, so this is the one we are finally, we're finally on the one that we were worried about, and that is our key pickup. So we're gonna drag in the pickup graphics. Looks like we have an issue with the sprite as well. So let's do our key sprite, and this is just gonna be a generic key. Actually, no, 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 we're good there. Um, almost done, almost done. Pickup light, pickup pivot, pick, Pistol pickup variant. Ah. We need to pull that into there. I think that's good. And then drag that in. Ah, nope, 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 nope. Wrong, wrong, wrong. We can keep the plate there, right? No, we can't. Let's double check something here. Pickup pivot variant. Shotgun. Well, I think, I think the standard is we just keep the plate. The plate will remain, I guess. So let's go back to our pistol here and pull the plate back out and then drag in, pivot, pivot, pick it, pivot. There we go. I am, uh, my brain is like fried right now. I'm at definitely on autopilot, so I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. Okay, we're almost done. Stamina, same thing. And then last one, stamina small. Same thing. So what does that mean? <laughs> it means that anything that is utilizing the pickup script is going to disable the graphic that I've specified. So I can specify which graphic I want to disable. So let's hit play. Please, Lord. I hope everything's okay. Because we just made a lot of changes. There's our graphics. We've got a beautiful key here. Good, so the plate did not remove, right? Which is fine, um, I guess. Um, this one here, 
So if I save it, let's just save it. Press V, game save, press B. Good, everything's correct. Let's collect this. Let's save it with V and then press B. Yay, it works. Okay, now the next question is, let's sort of try the opposite, which is save before we collect it, collect it and then press B, which is our, our B is, is load. Uh, look, look, we got a problem. No, 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 we don't. Okay, that's good. Everything saved properly. So clear all saves, hit play. <clears throat> all right. So you asked me, Sean Kim, what is Thomas working on today? Thomas is working on a freaking save system, which it it was built by AJ, and then um, I I made so many changes to the game that it didn't work anymore. <laughs> so we're going in and making it work again. Um, so if I press V here and save, then I collect the key, but then I go back in time and press B, those should appear. Yes. Okay, so the color did not get set up properly, I believe. I believe the color is not being set up properly. So what we need to do, we need to go to our key pickup here. Look at this, we have our key light here. Yeah, yeah. This actually needs to be set up properly inside of the, um, inside of the load. Right, 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 right. Um, so I'm gonna put the key light Hmm. Hmm. So it looks like the, the light for the key, which is a color. Um, I don't even know if I want to rely on that anymore because you can't really use a lot of real time lights in unity. You really don't want to use a lot. Um, so instead what I want to do is just change the, the color of the renderer, um, to be the color of the key. So for example, this right here should do that, but it doesn't seem like it's working. Like if I go here, go to my key, and I, it's, it looks like we're using universal render. Um, Materials.color, it should change the color to like blue. So if you could see here, if we go to our key here, we can choose a drop down. we've got blue. So let's hit play and take a look. I just wanna see that the color is correct. Okay, color is, it looks green, doesn't it? And that's because the, the key itself is golden. So let's go into the key. We're gonna make it um, gray. That way we can change the color and it, and, it, and, it, and it looks proper. Right now it's blue, but that's actually blue mixed with gold and it's making a green key. So I'm gonna make this just a desaturated gray. Save that. Um, we can just save it as a PNG because I know I'm going to like it. So just save that, commit to it. Now we have a blue key. See, we can even go so far as to say, look, this thing needs to be bright as F. So really crank it up. Plenty of contrast. Save it. And now it's going to be a little bit brighter. Look at that. So now if I look at my key, look at that. Now it's clearly blue. That is a blue key. Okay, um, what does that mean? It means that we need to make sure we go and remove the light source entirely. I don't like the light source. I don't like to rely on light sources like that anymore. I thought I did, but I don't. With Uni Unity's URP, which is the Universal Render Pipeline, it doesn't, uh, using real-time lights and relying on them for key crucial stuff like the color of a key, um, because the keys are coordinated and they're, they're related to doors. If you rely on the light, the real-time light, it just screws everything up. Because um, sometimes it'll flicker out and then you won't be able to see what color it is, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our script here. We're no longer going to change the light color. We're not even gonna have a key light, right? And then we're gonna just take this. We're gonna create a new script. Um, private void, set up color. And then we're gonna have this function here that sets up the color. Why are we doing that? So that we can actually access this. Um, 
if the renderer exists, then do that, right? I mean, honestly, you don't even need these brackets here, um, but I'm gonna keep them there because we'll probably do some other stuff. Um, so that's, that's good. Um, let's knock this over here and then we don't really need, well, sure. We, I don't think we need to, to put it in the start function. I think what we need to do is put it in the pickup function and that's in the load state. So when we're loading, all we need to do is simply go, look, if get component key pickup, if it has a key pickup component, then let's just go ahead and fire that function, right? Dot setup color. Um, this needs to be added to our namespaces. That looks like it needs to be set to public. And overall, I would say we should probably set up the color and start because sometimes we don't actually load anything. Sometimes it just, uh, sometimes we don't load anything. Okay, anyway, let's go into Unity here and take a look here. So what's gonna happen, what we just did is we basically said, the color needs to be set up on load but if we load data, like a load a save game, we need to address that and say, oh, switch the color to blue. Um, this one is, I think, unique to the game. I'm hoping that this kind of mess isn't applied to everything throughout the game. Seems like everything works pretty good so far. <clears throat> Thank you, Alex Rack2Dev. That means a lot to me. You said, love the game, Thomas. Okay, so it looks like we've got ourselves an issue. Um, no, 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 it's blue, is that blue? Let's double check. Okay, it looks like it's actually correct. Uh, the emission, I wonder if we need to make it emissive. No, it's just too dark. It's just too dark. Also, our emission map is all kind of screwy. So what we could do is we could open up the emission map here and I'm wondering what would happen if we set it to white at 25%, save as, and then we're gonna set this as a PSD, um, and then we're gonna to go to our actual emission map, which is a PNG. We're gonna delete that one. We don't need that one anymore. We're gonna add this one, our emission map here. There we go. That way it's a little bit brighter. So I just collected the key. Okay, it's a little much. <laughs> so if we, um, hmm, let's hit play again. Looks like the color isn't changing. Do you see what I'm saying? The color isn't changing at all. Let's double check here. Look at that. So let's go ahead and go to clear all saves and hit play one more time. Look at that. Um, okay, now it's blue, good. Okay, so it's working, it's working. But the emission is actually overriding it. So if I pause it, and sort of show you guys here. I'm gonna scroll up so you can see the emission. If we were to set this to blue, the key, you'd be able to see it. But I'm curious if we need to drop this down more. Yeah. Ugh, it's an ugly key. It's ugly, ugly. Let's hit save here. Maybe it's the metallic. We have, an, we have a metallic map. I'm gonna remove that. Felipe's gonna kill me, but we're gonna remove that. And then set the smoothness to be a little bit brighter here. Turn off emission for now. So now it's, it looks like a little green key, doesn't it? Hmm, hmm, hmm. I have an idea, guys. You're gonna love it, watch this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, let's keep the emissive, that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're not gonna change the base map, we're actually gonna change the emission color. Um, that's really what we wanna do here. Because watch, if I go to scene view here and I pull this key up, let's make sure he's positioned properly so that I can, he's gonna be about right here. So what we're gonna do is actually take this and we're gonna flip this. Like that. Okay, that way you're seeing the, the top portion here. Um, 
because I want to focus on that. And the reason why is because if we go to our emission here and we set it to like a vibrant blue and turn on our effects, then what we're doing is we're saying, oh, now it's a blue key. See that? So we need to make sure we set the emission um, to the proper color. Now that doesn't mean we can't also change the base map to like that, you know? So what I wanna do is I wanna jump on over to Unity's website and just figure out how to set the emission color uh, with code. See what we get. Setting emission color prog programmatically. Component, blah, 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 emission color, there it is. Okay, we'll set that really quick. Renderer material, set color, emission color, and we're just gonna set it to this. Okay, that should do it. Um, we just wanna make sure the intensity is pretty high. That's the real question. It, will the intensity be remembered, right? So if it was set to white like that, hopefully um, we would just set the color like that, right? So we'll set that to white and that to white. I'm gonna hit apply all. I don't really need to apply anything, do I? Let's hit play and take a look. There it is. Good. So it's blue. I, it looks like the, the emission did get set, but the problem is, is the intensity went, got knocked down to zero, which sucks. I think what we need to do is specifically set up the intensity with script. Because that's clearly a blue key, right? Um, it's a little much. That would be, that's good. Um, so we need to figure out how to set the emission um, properly. Um, let's see here. Something like Unity set emission intensity with code. Uh, set emission scale with a script. Times intensity. So you need to multiply it times intensity. Okay. I see, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So we can multiply it times five, and then that'll do it. So all I gotta do is go to my script here, and then multiply this times five. We could try five, we'll see. I don't know if five is gonna be good, but we'll give it a shot, see what happens. All right, let's jump inside of Unity here. <clears throat> and take a look here. So it looks like, if we just go down here, it looks like intensity set to 2.7. So it means it's working. Okay, good. So I feel like it needs to be something like this. Maybe even a little bit more. So let's multiply it times eight. And um, hey, we'll also test, remember we're working on the same system here. So we wanna make sure that when we reload the key, let's say we don't collect it. Let's say we save, then we collect it, but then we load back to the previous save. It should set up the color properly for us on load, okay? Because remember guys, it's, it's not like we're saving the actual world. We're saving data points. So we're saving, hey, this key is this color. So when you load up Unity, switch it over to this color. So you have to do that with anything you wanna save, you have to tell Unity to flip it to what you want, to those values. Okay, I think we could probably multiply that times 10. I would even say 15. Let's see, let's take a look. And also, I feel like the metallic, despite it being great, Although I will say, let's, I, I, oh, Thomas, we gotta double check something here, guys. It looks like, oh no, we're good. I was gonna say our reflection probes aren't baked, but they are baked, you can see them right here. Reflection probes have a lot to do with how your metallics look. Well, they have everything to do with how your metallics look. Um, so if your key, metallic key looks really weird, um, 
Hey, it looks like we have some weird issues going on with the with the emission map. But that's good. That's good, guys. Okay, uh, let's 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 save it. So I'm gonna press V. Scene saved. Good. Now when I collect it, and then press B, it should respond, and the colors get set up properly. Isn't that cool? And that's what we want. That is what we want. Um. Okay. One final thing with this key is let's just make its rotation just a little bit more. It looks like it's at negative 40, never negative 53, negative 45 is what we want. A nice clean quarter of a turn. Is that the word? No, it's a quarter. Maybe it's a half quarter, 45, 90. Yeah, I think it's a half quarter turn. Um, so yeah, that looks great. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We could probably get away with adding some kind of halo Although I, I do doubt that it's even going to show up because Unity has this thing where like their halos don't ever show up. So yeah, like I said, um, <laughs> it's just annoying. I think it's because the camera needs like a halo renderer, but I'm not going to worry about it. There's so much to do. That's the last thing on my mind. Okay, let's double check and make sure all of our save data points work. This looks great. This looks great. Um, Let's, man, I'm, I'm really nervous to even test any of this out, but let's, let's throw a spider in, uh, spider default, and see if when we kill him, he respawns, okay? <coughs> there he is, okay? Good, good, good. So I'm gonna save it with V, scene saved, grab our gun, it looks like we're dead, let's wait for us to load, and it should be back. Okay, loading, there he is. Now if I kill him and then save and grab the key, he should be dead officially. So let's press V to save and then B to load. Good, okay, that's great. Good, and even the syringe is proper. So that's great. All right, it's all saved. I like it. Okay, the spider is working great. The next question is, what about, um, well, let's say like ammo, like pistol ammo. And if one ammo works, then I don't feel like we need to worry about every single one. Um, knock on wood. Everybody please knock on wood for me. Um, but if we go to our pistol pickup ammo, which is right here, if I hit play, um, I hope it doesn't disappear on me. Oh, look, it loaded. Although the gun is, is, for some reason, my gun rotation sometimes will do this. I have no idea why. Um, but it looks like the ammo looks great. I, I don't think I need to do anything. I'm going to try and figure out this weapon really quick. Because I've been trying to figure this out for probably a year. Why my guns sometimes, just randomly, will rotate in the weirdest angles. Okay, so it looks like the gun mount position is being set to frickin' 90. Is that even correct? Maybe it's not that. Maybe it's the pistol. No, the pistol's fine. The pivot point is set to some strange rotation. The graphic itself is fine. What on earth? I don't know. That's weird, um, but everything looks like it's loading properly. Let's hit play again and double check. Okay, look, it all saved. Such good news, I'm thrilled about this. I'm, I'm thrilled because I've been worried about this save system for probably a year, a year and five months, just sort of paranoid or panicky that I'm not gonna be able to understand the save system and I'm gonna be screwed. Right, because without a, a good save system, you don't have a game. Um, there is a rigid body somewhere that changes your object's rotation. I highly doubt that. But we can double check. It's something to do with like, I could show it to you actually. So basically, my weapons rotate when you move. Right, So we can actually take a look here and see that we have this rotation function. 
um, that's going to cause the weapon to rotate a little bit. Um, so I want to see where that's occurring. Yeah, I'm definitely curious as to why it's doing that. So let's see here. Hmm. It could be in our weapon controller. Hmm. I don't know where it's occurring. Um, could also be our input manager. There's a lot of different scripts that could be affecting it. I did this like th uh, a year ago, not three years ago, a year ago. And so that's why I don't know where the script is that causes it to rotate. I don't know where that is anymore. Um, I feel like I'm getting close. Nope, okay, let's hit play, and let's just see what's going on with this pistol here. So you can see that, I believe, yeah, it rotates. So something is rotating. So let's double check here. Gun mount position. Okay, so it should be set to 90. It should be set to 90. So I'm gonna search for gun mount position and just see where the rotation is changing. There it is. All right. Hmm. Interesting. If I were to remove this, would it really make that much of a difference to the game? Because I think it's cool to have like the gun rotate when you move, sort of have it like fluid. But uh, I'm just curious, is it even worth the struggle? Let's keep hitting play and see if we can get in a screwy situation. <laughs> JM Sifter says, I recently temporarily gave up on game development. Any tips for uh, not doing that? Yeah, I think it's good to give up for a little bit. Um, just take a month off. I gave up on this game for about four months because I just got sick of it. And I'm probably going to get sick of it again. And I just know now, like I've, after 10 years of making games, my goodness, I've kind of figured out, hey, you know what? Um, I... Uh, I always lose motivation, so it's good to just take a break. Yeah, I like the I like the movement a lot better. It's pretty cool. So we need to figure out what the heck is going on here. Why it will, I have a feeling it's the lerp. Because that's not the right way to lerp. Maybe it is. Goodness me. Hmm. But by the way, if I if I did negative divided by two and then divided by like one here and then one here, we're gonna get some crazy cool rotation. Like, um, yeah, the gun rotation is always gonna change. Okay, there it is. Okay, so it looks like it looks like the rotation is correct. So this is fine, okay? That's fine. So the, the question is, what is causing this rotation? Why is it all of a sudden gangster? Is it our camera? No. Is it our pistol?
No. Is it the scale? Like if I were to do this and go to game view here and set this to zero, it's still crooked. That's so funny. Oh man, it's messed up. But yeah, like I, I'm confused because it's zero zero ninety. Um but it's supposed to be zero zero ninety. Like if I hit play, watch. Now it's fine. And it's set to zero zero ninety. And I love I love having it move like that. It's so cool. I need to get rid of that elbow. Look at that. It's in my face. So I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's keep going. Um, I feel like the rotation is fine. Um, at 0, 0, 0090, that's the correct rotation. Okay, so Alpha put it in the update. Technically, you should only move the parent transform and not the gun. I'm not moving the gun. I'm just moving the parent transform. And it is in the update, isn't it? Yeah, it's, up, it's in the update. No, the local rotation is wrong when the bug happens, in fact. Really? Okay, Alpha. Alpha Blender, tell me what's going on here. Technically, you should only move the parent transform and not the gun. So what, what, what local rotation value are you saying is incorrect here? Alpha Blender says, no, the local rotation is wrong when the bug happens, in fact. Maybe we need to make sure that it's instantiated before we rotate it. <gasps> oh. Interesting. Interesting. I think you might be right here. So, where do we do that? You're right. I think you're right about the local rotation. Um, <clears throat> I think you're right about that. Let's hit play here and take a look. Okay, so the pistol is currently set to 0, 0, negative 24. It should be set to 0, 0, negative 91. Let's double check. Let's try and get in an error. Okay, there we go. That's hilarious. So if we go to pistol clone, this should be negative 90. Okay. So let's. what we need to do is... Um, we need to set the pistol clone rotation to negative 90. So my theory is, um, wait a second. Yeah. I feel like we just need to do it here um, or on, on a wake or something, right? I mean, right? Just on a wake, just say, look, your rotation needs to be 0, 0, 90. We can try. I'll just do it on enable and just say uh, <coughs> transform dot rotation equals, what is it, new Euler something? Can you freeze the Z on the pistol clone? Uh, I'm curious as to why it's even rotating. I think it has to do with, it's instantiated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I got it. I figured it out. We need to set the, when it instantiates, when it instantiates onto the weapon, you need to set the weapon to zero. You need to set the weapon's rotation to zero. Or you could just say, look, your local rotation is gonna be Euler, how do you do local rotation? <laughs> Whenever I'm doing rotation, I suck at this. Set rotate, set local rotation, Euler, Unity. 
Oh, transformed at local Euler angles. Yeah. Okay, I think this is it. Transform, er, blah, 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 blah. And then you just do new quaternion dot Euler, I guess. I'm not sure, I can't remember. I'm so bad with Euler angles. It's a vector. Is it really a vector? That's crazy, I didn't know that. Is it really? <laughs> new vector three, zero, zero, 90. Hey, let's try that out, guys. So when it gets enabled, it's just gonna make sure it's setting its local URL angles um, properly. That's the theory, at least. So, so let's take a look here, man. Um, is it Quaternion Euler? I don't think that's it. Alpha Blender. I don't think that's correct, but we'll try. There's my gun, and it's screwy. So it's currently set to negative 60. Why? I, I told you. Maybe it's not on enable. Let's, let's do a debug.log. Debug.log, set the local Euler angles. How do, you, how do you deal with the not knowing or the feeling of being lost when starting something new? Well, let me tell you something. When you start game dev, you're never, no, with game dev, I hate to be dramatic here, but when you, um, hey, okay, so let's see here. When you're making new game, when you're learning game dev, you never really get to a point where it all makes sense. Um, things speed up, but you always feel like a loser. At least that's how it is for me. Um, we set the local EULA angles, but for some reason, okay, that got set. What the F? Okay, so that's still screwy. What if I put it in update? I, I know I shouldn't, but what if I do? Right? Okay, I have a theory. First off, let's just stick it in update and just see if that solves the problem. If that solves the problem, we know what the problem is. Um, then we just gotta figure out how to fix it before it happens, right? Um, so I, I, I think it's when you instantiate, because these weapons are getting instantiated at real time. Um, when the instantiation occurs, we have to set the instantiated pivot point to zero um, before instantiating. Otherwise, everything gets confused but I just wanna make sure that this fixes it. It doesn't, okay, that, that doesn't solve the problem. Look, pistol clone, it's at 90. Look at that. It's all correct, but I'm still seeing it flipped. What? It's crazy. I guess it just has to do with its local rotation. Hmm. Oh, was it supposed to be negative 90? Was it supposed to be negative 90? I think you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good job, good job. Um, yes, yes, yes. Celtic Dragon Studio, thank you so much. Celtic, Celtic Dragon Studio is correct here. It's supposed to be positive 90. So look, problem solved, right? So if I just go crazy, shake my mouse, we're good. So, you know, clearly guys, you don't wanna be setting that at runtime, that's ridiculous. Um, so the next question is, okay, well, the instantiation of the weapons, and that, that's probably gonna be in the weapon manager, Let's see, do we have an instantiation occurring? We're gonna look for an instantiation. There it is. That's bullet. That's projectile. Nope. Nope. We're instantiating a weapon from somewhere. Uh, in the weapon controller, change weapon. 
Let's see what happens in change weapon. Direct equip. Weapon manager dot equip. So now we're in the weapon manager and we're about to do an instantiation. There it is. Okay. So before we instantiate, we need to say, look, the gun mount position needs to be reverted back to zero. Okay. Which is, this is so confusing, which is first off, let's go to our demo weapon. And in that update, I don't want that, that, I don't want that. So we're going to save that. Where is this? Okay. Ah, oh, yes. It's in the, the, um, weapon controller. Hey, that's right. We need to look for the, the gun mount position. Was it the gun mount position that was rotating? There it was. Okay. So we need to set this rotation to zero. Gun mount position, local rotation. Yes. Okay. So we go, to, this is what we do. We go to controller. Do I have a controller? I don't. Okay. Game manager dot player controller dot gun mount position at transformer dot local rota rotation equals whatever the Caternian zero is or whatever, right? Um, so let's double check here. Caternian dot Euler. And that's going to be zero, 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 right? Can you do it that way? I highly doubt it. I always have trouble with Euler. Okay, it works. Um, we need to make sure we import this. Now we have an issue here. Um, is it, oh, it's protected. Okay, so let's go to player controller. And we just want to make sure that the gun mount position Son of a bee, hold on. Is public. So this will be public. We don't need it to be serialized because serializing exposes it in the inspector, but if it's public, it's already gonna be exposed by default. So basically what we're doing here is we're saying, look, if you're gonna instantiate a weapon, that's fine, but just make sure you set that gun mount back to zero. Zero, instantiate, and then it can wiggle around, right? So let's try that. <laughs> I I think what we should do is do it like this. This is even worse. Um, does it need to be rotation and not local rotation? When does the parent occur? That's a good question. Spawned weapon instance. Where does the parent occur? It should be parented. So, I don't know. Just turn on input, turn off input until gun is instantiated. Hmm. We could also try this. Um, no. You need to rotate. No, the gun mount position needs to be rotated. Um, maybe we can set who interesting. Maybe this needs to be Euler, you know, I don't know. I don't know. At this point, I have no idea. I have no idea. That's probably not going to work. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's what I'm confused by is I don't know where the parents occurring. I do.
don't know where the parent's occurring. It's getting parented somewhere. We could maybe look inside the demo weapon script. Ah, I think I know what's going on. Demo weapon. We open up demo weapon. There's actually a weapon parent script here. We can open that up and take a look. Is there a start function? Equip. Set parent. There it is. There it is. Ha! Okie dokie. So let's go back to our weapon controller. Um, nope, it's in the weapon manager. We're not going to do anything here. We're not going to do anything here. We're simply going to set its rotation inside of the weapon parent script here, right here. We can set the rotation, I believe, right here. Transform dot local rotation. Really, you can do local Euler's, right? Local Euler angles equals new vector three, zero, zero, negative 90. Um, right? Right? After the parent, okay. After the parent, after the parent, after the parent, after the parent is what Odin Kong is telling us to do. All right. Let's take a look and see if this fixes the problem. Set gun model rotation on instantiate, not set rotation on mount. Okay, let's double check. Okay, the rotation feels off. I don't think it is though. Okay. <coughs> hey, I think we did it. Not without uh, some serious help from you guys. Thank you so much, guys. I think we solved the problem. Oh, yeah. Good. Awesome. That was a, that's, that's, seriously, guys, that's really helpful, and I really appreciate you guys doing that um, or helping me out with that because that's been a problem for a, for a, well, it's been a whopping year. So, <laughs> Thank you so much. I want to say a huge thank you to Bruno and Massimiliano for being new students of full-time game dev. It really means the world to me. It's a support it supports father's development, but more importantly, it does support you too and your future. Um, it's a it's a massive course. It's a great course. I could say that because I have three thousand students worldwide. And by the way, if you're a student, feel free to let us know what you think about the course in the chat. Um, I'm willing to put myself out there and ask, what do you think about the course? Because I know that. A ton of my students, um, the vast majority of them, um, love the course, and we have great reviews. And by the way, you're also going to get 2D Art Pro and Stream My Game and Easy 3D, which are bonus courses. Makes this a two-month program or more. It's going to take you a while to finish this program. You're going to learn everything I've learned in the last 15 years of becoming a full-time game developer. This is my job, guys. I have a family. I have kids. I have a mortgage. I have bills to pay. I have a team to pay. And yet, I've been able to work with publishers. I've been able to do Kickstarter campaigns and release multiple games on multiple platforms. I teach you how to do it. And hey, you're gonna get a free t-shirt as well. There's probably one code. No, 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 no. There's actually, there's uh, five codes today. So there's four codes available probably, maybe three or four below, um, hopefully. Uh, I don't know how many have, have been sold out today so far. But if you wanna join the program, learn 2D and 3D art, learn how to hit the Steam front page, learn how to reach out with to publishers and get six figures in funding with just a demo. C Sharp, Unity, Kickstarter, 2D, interiors, exteriors, all of that stuff, free t-shirt, just a ton of content. This thing's massive. If you want to join this program, check it out below. All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my sponsored ad reads. It really means a lot to me that you're willing to listen and support the channel. I will talk to you guys later. That was a really fun day. We got a lot done and I'm surprised. Seriously, I am surprised. I'm very, very surprised that I'm in a good mood right now because have you guys ever worked on your game and uh, you're thinking to yourself, I am such an idiot. This is the dumbest game and you get like a flushed, hot feeling, almost like a feverish feeling of this is a huge waste of time. 
And I still get that feeling after six, no, how long have I been doing this? 10 years, after 10 years of making games, really it's been about 14. 14 years of making games, I still feel that way. Today I was like, oh, this is a house of cards. This game is crap. But it just, it's, it's just that feeling of not knowing. It's, you feel like you can't breathe, especially when you're doing save system stuff. It's the feeling of unknown. When you're doing artwork or 3D models or dragging in models into your game or using assets or working with a team and it's coming together, that's great. But the moment you start incorporating technical stuff like a save system or a dialogue system, then things get really, really frustrating. That's okay though, it's gonna be all right. I encourage you that, well, I feel this way all the time and it's okay. It's okay, because it will work out. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game. And let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up. Your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.